So you came, well, let's finish it. We, we don't have, I want to keep you too long. We're, we're coming up on two hours and I don't just want you to say I had a good time. They were great. I want to hear what your experience, experience. was yes. with the refugee jitsu outreach that I lead because you got to not just teach, but you got to talk to some of the students and some you got to talk to in Spanish, which I was yeah. so glad for. Mm -hmm. And you got to meet and your mom and your aunt got to meet a couple of the parents, the mothers yep. that came. And that was to me, that was really special. But I didn't know because I don't speak Spanish. So I don't know what all and, and you don't have to share anything private. But I want I want to hear about your experience at Refugee Jitsu and how it was for you, because that's what you know, we brought you here. I wanted my kids to meet you. Mm -hmm. They were, they, they, I could watch their faces while they were watching you and they were so curious. And at first they did, they were hesitant to ask questions, but then once you started answering questions, then more hands started raising and they got more comfortable. So we are going to definitely bring you back at some point because I know they would want to spend more time yeah. with you, but tell me and tell the, the viewers and whoever's listening to this, about your experience with refugee jitsu so that experience was something that it really touched my heart in a deep way especially like uh i remember that when this thing of the mat made video happen a lot of people started to sending me messages and everything i wanna i wanna uh touch this topic and explain how it happened because for me it is a big blessing to be here so like uh, I remember that the professor JM sent me the message through Instagram and he was like hopefully you are able to listen to this message and hopefully you are able to come and if not please just let me know and I was like when he sent me the message explaining about what he is doing to help the refugee kids like a, i felt something in my heart that i don't have words to describe and i was like i want to be part of this i want to help i want to support and i sent him a message extremely fast i i think i took a little bit to reply because like a, I i had like a bunch of messages yeah. but then i replied and i was like yes let's do it <laughs> when you want to do it and we coordinate everything <clears throat> and i came here and last night was a very wonderful experience because i am hispanic too mm. and i identify myself with those kids many of the kids are not hispanic but i identify myself with those people because like uh, i know how hard it is to come from other country and to come here and you have to learn the language mm. and then your parents have to work like nobody's business in order to pay the bills and to survive and sometimes your parents don't have the possibility to support you or to help you in the things that you want to do and I know how hard it is mm. right so I understood their situation and also because of the bullying because they come from other countries and maybe because they don't speak well the language they make fun of them and they suffer from bullying or rejection mm -hmm. and that is something that i gonna apologize for the word but it completely sucks mm -hmm. and it's very sad that people will bully this type of kids that the life for them had been super tough, mm -hmm. you know? So like uh, for me to be able to talk to them and to motivate them and to push them was something super cool because I was feeling that they were looking at me like a superhero. <laughs> yeah. Like a, whoa, he's blind. Yeah. And he's a black belt. And I told them you were daredevil. Yeah, I told them, I was like, you guys know Daredevil, right? <laughs> it, there's a real Daredevil right over there. He's even got the cane, and he does jujitsu. And I'm gonna let him choke you if you're bad, so you better <laughs> listen to him. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it was a very wonderful experience because you are doing a really good job because you are teaching them values, principles, and how to be 
better persons every day. Mm -hmm. And all the tools that you are giving them is amazing. I can really tell that God is using you to help these kids that are in a super need, but also to help the future generation mm -hmm. because these kids are the future generation and the generations will be better because of the job that you are doing you know so that's something super cool and like uh, when I was talking to them I felt identified because I also suffered from bullying mm -hmm. and I also had to come to this country with my mother and to learn yeah. the language and then yeah. To stay here is, is not easy. You know? And you didn't know any English when you got here. No, nothing. I and couldn't speak any word. Yeah, that's phenomenal. And I, I, I'm so, I, I want people to realize that, that they're listening. Because people listening probably think, oh, you grew up listening and speaking some English. And then you studied it very hard. And then you came to America. No, no. you learned here. Yeah, I learned it here. I study a lot. Yeah. And I used to pray and I ask God, please, Lord, help me to learn English. I want to do it. It's so important. Yeah. And then he did it. He, he helped me. He also, has. I, I put my part, you know, I study a lot and that was yeah. super helpful. But what I wanted to say is that you guys should support this wonderful cause that the professor J.M. is doing mm -hmm. because he's doing this with all his heart. He's not doing this to for other, uh, uh, how I can say the word, with other... Uh, you can say it in Spanish. I'll find a translation. <laughs> with other, <laughs> como, intereses. Okay, so other other like, motives. <laughs> with other other motives and, and ulterior motives is what we would yeah. say. Yes. Because you are doing this because you really want to help. Because you want to have a better future for these kids. And you want to show them what a real Christian must be. Mm. Because I remember last night you were telling me. No, it's, it's very sad when Christians preach that you must be good. But if you don't do nothing about it, it doesn't work. Right? Right, right so actions yeah, is what yeah. really means like uh, in the bible said that if you are uh, like a a good tree you will have always like a uh, good fruits yes and the good fruits are the actions mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so what you are doing you are showing to all that kids that maybe they don't believe in jesus maybe they are not christians but you are Showing the showing them a very good example of what a Christian is. You yeah, know? Well, yeah, it was what I told you last night. You know, no, our we don't know? preach at Refugee Jitsu. We don't we don't teach them discipleship or yep. I because we have my first students. I told you they were they were uh, devout Muslims from Afghanistan, and I and they're they're coming to a country where they're already feared. Refugees in America, people fear them because there's some people have told them, and sadly, even some Christians have said, well, this is how terrorists are coming into the country. They're sneaking mm -hmm. in as refugees, so we can't reach out to these people. Or if they're Muslim, they're just trying to infiltrate America to bring down this country. Mm -hmm. and, and I just listened to that, and it made me so angry. Super sad. It was like, that's not true. Mm -hmm. One, it's not true. And two, even if it were true, Jesus still calls us to serve and to love and to reach out Our and enemies. to bring in yeah. the orphan, the widow, the foreigner, the stranger, the alien, uh, the immigrant. And I was just hearing Christians were acting so unchristian toward the very community that Jesus was a part of. Jesus was a refugee. Jesus had to flee Bethlehem to go to Egypt. Yeah. He was a he was a refugee fleeing for his life, mm -hmm. and and that's who we worship. That's our yeah. savior. So there's no way a Christian can turn their back on refugees or immigrants, even even immigrants, even people just coming to to have a better life. You can't turn your back on them and still claim to faithfully love Jesus because you're turning your back on Jesus. Mm -hmm. What you did to the least of these, you did to me. 
so I, I look at the, how we treat the margins of society is a direct reflection of what kind of fruit we're bearing in our own life. Yeah. And if your doctrine is sound and your theology is good and you can preach the Bible and get people shouting and screaming and singing and hollering, but you don't reach across and love your enemy, then your faith is dead. Yeah, that's why we got to do what we preach, you know? Exactly. And so for me, it was reaching out to specifically Muslim refugees, Middle Eastern refugees, because in America, they are the most feared. Yeah. But because of after 9 11, but mm -hmm. also Hispanic refugees, because in America, there's the, the, a lot of people have the misconception they're just coming to steal my job. They're just mm -hmm. coming to, to make, to get the government to give them money and then they're going to live and going to do all this stuff and they're going to da da da. And I'm like, you don't understand the yeah. hardship, mm -hmm. you know? And so I meet people like, people like your mom who has sacrificed a good life in Ecuador mm -hmm. yep. for you to come and have the possibilities that you would not have in Ecuador. Yeah. That is the kind of people that I want as my neighbor. That's like true. I want to, I tell people, if you could choose your neighbor, choose a refugee because they'll be the best neighbors you'll ever have because they know what it takes to, they know what it's like to come from nothing and to work for things. And it's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a sad misconception. So I was so glad when you could come and, and when you could speak to my students and their parents in Spanish. Yeah, that was awesome. Man, what was that like getting to meet some of the parents and, and to talk to them and, and for your mom and for your aunt? What was that like for them? It was a nice experience because my mother, my aunt and I, we always want to be like a instruments mm -hmm. in the gun in the hands of god you know we mm -hmm. want to serve the lord in everything that we do and mm -hmm. it was super cool to be able to give them a message of hope mm -hmm. you know and to let them know that they they should continue helping their kids mm -hmm. and that they should continue working for them and continue treating them in the best way as possible and giving them that support that sometimes they needed because sometimes they don't have a person that could tell them mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. especially because sometimes the parents don't speak the language, right? you know, right. only the kids speak English, but then the parents, they don't speak any English. Mm -hmm. So they don't have the possibility to speak with other people with other mentality, right? Yeah. And sometimes they are alone, working so much, and the time is super valuous, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't have the time to spend with the family. Yeah, so, because they're having to work so hard. Yeah, yeah. so that's why uh, my mother, my aunt, and I, we were able to give them a very nice message of hope, and to tell them that they are doing the things right because mm -hmm. they are working so much in order to survive in this country, you know? Mm -hmm. What I want to say is that what you're doing is so awesome and I want to continue helping. I want to continue supporting in whatever way that I can. And I, I encourage the people to donate to this wonderful cause mm. because it's a real one. Mm. It's an honest one. It's, it's a cause that really, really came from the professor J.M. Hart. And I am pretty sure that God inserted that <laughs> yeah. in his heart. Well, it, it, I, would, because, I would tell you this. I never wanted to teach kids. Yeah. I only teach adults at the Hensel Gracie class. Wow. I only teach the adults. So I joke around I don't like teaching kids. And I said, it would only God could make me teach a bunch of kids. <laughs> and what does God do? You're going to have a children's jujitsu ministry to refugee, immigrant, and, and local lower income kids. And now those are some of my favorite kids to teach. I can't explain it other than God has to give you a burden for something. And then he gives you what you need to do that thing. And in my case, it was the desire and the ability and the love to teach children that I didn't have before I started this program. <laughs> it's a miracle. No, but it's God, you know, it's God that the one that put that love and that ability 
to do it, you know? Because some of the kids, they don't have a father or right. maybe they don't have that figure to mm -hmm. follow, right? Mm -hmm. And you are for them that. I remember that I talked to your student, Brian, and he was telling me, the professor JM is like my father. <laughs> he has helped me so much. He has supported me so much. And he's like my father. I like him. I like that guy so much. <laughs> he was like, whoa, that's so cool. And it's true. Mm. Because you are that figure, that example that those kids will follow. Mm. And you are doing a super wonderful job. Well, I was glad that I appreciate that. Thank you. And I was glad they got to meet you. And I always no no one person can be what everyone needs. So I want my students to meet other instructors. I want more volunteers to come and that they get to work with them. And I'm always trying to bring more people into the organization just to volunteer, just to see it. To feel the experience. Yeah, just to experience it because one of the goals is I want – other instructors. When I started Refugee Jiu Jitsu, my specific goal was I want this to just show other Jiu Jitsu instructors what they can do in their community because they may not have a high refugee population, but every city in America has kids who can't afford Jiu Jitsu yeah. who need Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. And so if it, if it's an instructor that's like, okay, you have an academy, great, give five scholarships a year to kids in the neighborhood who need jujitsu but can't afford it. Have, if, if there's a kid whose mother cleans houses, have her come clean your house every three months and her child gets to train with you. You know, like find ways to, tr even if it's trade, you're not just giving, just find a way, make the kid work at the academy and that will cover their dues. If they come in and they, they mop the mats, they clean the bathrooms every Saturday or something like that, just find, I want to encourage jujitsu instructors, find ways to make jujitsu accessible to the people that need it because they really do and it will change kids' lives For sure. if you start them on that path. That's something very cool, and, and I agree completely with that message. Mm. You, you professors, please help. Help because there are many people in need of Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Jiu Jitsu could be a super good tool for someone to success. Yeah. For example, in my case, I want to share this. Like, uh, when I was a brown belt, like, uh, I couldn't train for two years, and then I came back to Jiu Jitsu. And my mother, she works really hard, and she's a single mother. Uh, my father doesn't help us anymore. So my mother is the one that had to pay all the bills. Mm. And Jiu-Jitsu is so expensive. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't afford it. And when I used to go to the gyms that I went, like all the professors used to help me because I told them about my story and they saw my determination and my Jiu-Jitsu skills. And they always giving me like a, the first school gave me like a super huge discount. Mm. And I was only paying like $80 a month and that was super cool. Mm. And then in the second school, the same thing happened. And then in the school that I am now, that I am now, uh, in the beginning, when I was a brown belt, he also asked me to pay for 80. But then mm. one time my mother lost her job and she couldn't continue working for a while. And the professor was like, you know what, Carlos? Don't, don't worry. Don't pay me nothing. Mm -hmm. And he helped me so much. My professor name is Enrique Gamafilio. His mm. gym is called Gamafilio Martial Arts. And then when I got my black belt, the things got way better and he saw all my skills, teaching and everything and helping the people and he offered me a job and now I am working there. I teach the 7 a.m. class mm. and I am competing in the highest level. A lot of people had support me and that's why I said this to the professors because Jiu Jitsu could really change lives like uh, it did in mind yeah so. if he had just said oh you can't pay get lost yeah. you wouldn't be who you are today 
but because you had that instructor pouring into you and that's that's so huge mm -hmm. um so for, if you are an instructor if you're a martial arts owner out there doesn't mean you let students take advantage of you it doesn't mean students just say well i don't want to pay no it's the ones who you know you know your students you know the ones who really need it but who just can't afford it um Find, try to find ways to reach those people because you you could have a Carlos Alvarez right in your midst and not yeah. even know it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or maybe a world champion or someone that is going to success so much. Well, you'll be world champion. You're keeping at it. So that's the next goal. <laughs> it's world Hopefully. champion. But it'll start with uh, winning this weekend. Yeah. And so...